Today we are going to show you how to install a wet underfloor heating system. Although underfloor heating can be fitted to a multitude of different floor constructions, including timber suspended floors, the most common is concrete, and that is what we are going to look at in this video. Having leveled the concrete, fit polyurethane edge insulation, for example, 25mm kingspan, along each wall and lay sheets of insulation directly onto the floor. Tape all of the joints between the pieces of both floor and edging insulation. Now, if you're using a wet screed, then you must also fit a plastic membrane for additional protection. It's also important when applying a wet screed to fit a soft edging strip in addition to the edge insulation as this acts as an expansion joint to prevent cracking of the screed. Assemble the manifold and fix it to the wall in the designated position. Before laying the pipework, take a look at your drawing. This will show such things as the estimated pipe length for each circuit and pipe spacing, which is typically 200 mm. Also, mark on the floor those areas that are not to be heated, such as where kitchen units are to stand. Firstly, connect the pipe to the flow manifold and starting from the outside walls, work your way inwards. Stay approximately 100 mm inside each wall. The pipe clips can either be pushed in by hand or using a tacker gun, similar to the one being used here. Of course, do not cut the pipe until you have returned to the manifold. Mark up all of the pipe circuits with the loop length and a zone name, such as kitchen or lounge. Firstly, close the manifold isolation valves and temporarily connect hose pipes to the fill and drain valves. Fill each circuit in turn, making sure that all of the air has been flushed out before moving on to the next circuit. When all of the circuits have been filled with water, make sure that each one is left fully open. The longer each circuit is, the more flow it will need. So, using a radiator bleed key, adjust the flow rate of each circuit accordingly. With the manifold isolation valves still closed and all circuits open, connect a test pump and raise the pressure to 6 bar. Watch for any pressure losses. To avoid the possibility of any damage, immediately after the pipe installation is complete and you are sure that the system is watertight, lay the screed. Whilst the screed is being laid, the pipework should remain pressurized. For a sand cement screed, the thickness is typically 65 to 75 millimeters. Liquid screeds need to be 50 millimeters minimum. Both thicknesses include the pipe. As a rule of thumb, the drying time is one day per millimetre for the first 40 millimetres and two days per millimetre thereafter. Connect the boiler to the underfloor heating system with a two-port motorised valve, fitted on the flow pipe to make it an independent system. After about two months of allowing the screed to dry, fire up the underfloor heating system. Starting out with a minimum temperature setting, gently increase it by 1 degree per day until you reach the required temperature. Once the screed is fully dried, you can install your finished flooring. Please note, it's important that you do not fit the final floor finish onto a warm floor. So, if the underfloor heating is on, please make sure that you switch it off at least two days before fitting your flooring. We trust that this short video has given you an insight into installing underfloor heating. Please get in touch if you would like to know more or to order a system.